following program shows real people taken into custody by Dallas SWAT. They are presumed innocent until proven guilty. Let's go, let's go. Time to go to work. Coming in, coming in, coming in! Always ready. That's what we're designed to do. Let's go! Designed to be. Yeah, Danny's gotta go to work. When he talks to you about his daughter, how does he view her? We know you care about the daughter. Come outside so you can see her. Right! Please stop! Please stop! Some weekend. Barricade suspect, Arthur Davis. Suspect is in five seconds. You know there's a shooter in here. I like owning this stuff before we even get on it. I'm one of the more senior guys in SWAT. I've been on the team for 15 years. Can't see the landing. Can't see the whole landing. Can't see the whole landing. Got the door. In this training, we are using one of our guys as a bad guy. Second level. Two stairwells up. I see the back. And we're simulating working a stairwell, which is a perfect ambush point for suspects on us. We've learned sometimes the hard way. The last place you want to learn your lessons is in the field. I need one long. I'm taking the left. I need one long. I'm long. Hey, you freaking cops, get the hell out of here. I told you I'd go back to jail. The sense of these guys left, closed, right. In situations where you're going into their battlefield, we're going in blind. It's it's a, not a good situation to be in because we don't know the layout of their home. We don't know where their weapons are. Most times they are armed. That's why we're getting called. That's a dangerous combination for us. And that's why we, we have to train hard for that battle. Turn around. All right, guys, send it right there. We've got a little short notice gig for narcotics. We're going to uh, West Dallas. In situations like that, then you have to rely more heavily on your training and work through the problems on the run, basically. See the knob on the door to the cage looks like it's on the left side. On this particular house, there's a lot of bars on the windows that meshed up to. It looks, it looks like it. There's bars and mesh on the front porch. Anytime you have that, we lose the speed element and the surprise element. Once, once we set that, we'll pull back. Johnny dumped the bag. Yeah. And what we're going to do to get the upper hand on these guys is we're going to immediately deploy flashbangs. You get a bright flash and you get a loud bang or concussion. And, and that works to give us that little edge that we need in order to, to get the jump on these guys. Take a strap to the uh, door of the cage on the front porch. This particular one, we're going to use the three pulls. We're going to pull two doors and one window. The primary entry is a Delta three door. He's guessing right now, just, just a guess, that if we don't make it into the driveway, it won't be long enough to reach. Our, our pulls on this operation are done in real close quarters environment, so that's going to be a problem. 25 feet from the street to that door, that window, I don't think it'll reach. Will this become primary entry point, then, if we don't pop that? Yes, sir. You'll, we'll push in behind you guys. My role on this operation is we're breaching the front door, the front cage. Then we're going to breach the front door and front window inside the cage. If we fail to get the back door pulled off, then our point will be the primary entry point. We'll be the, the uh, primary entry team on this. Keith, what do you have going on here? Multiple pulls coming off the front of the vehicle. There are two pulls coming off the passenger side, one pull coming off the driveway. 
When we set up a pull, first thing we look at is obviously our objective. We hook up our strap, and then we hook up the other end to whatever tool we decide to use for the job. This particular one's an easy little fish hook. The straps will be fastened on the bumper for easy deployment to place the hook. Step back, leave it. it. Should come off all about the same time if we set our straps up right. This is the Scott McIntyre deployment method, which works. Works very well. It's a pretty complicated method, isn't it? Yeah. One bungee cord. Two dollar bungee cord and four hundred dollar strap. We're good. All it takes in a warrant like this is somebody be out of position when the poles are made and catching a piece of steel alongside the head and killing them. A suspect turning aggressive and being in a crossfire situation with other officers. I mean, there, there's a whole gamut of things that could go wrong. Uh, you know, there's just it's a dangerous job. There's no doubt about it. Come in on the right-hand side, shy of me. I'm going deep, covering a door, and then I'll try and pick up as much window as I can. Yes, sir. There it is, boys. Don't peel us off in the fence, bubble. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Stay tight. Stay tight. Stay tight. Stay tight. Him set it, set it, set it, hit us. Screen door under, you got breach. Take the window from the outside. Right, right now, right now. Hang on a second, guys. Mark, hang on just one minute, because we may have a separate room there that we don't know about. Hey, Keith. Sir. Can you guys see this opening here from inside? They made some adjustments to the structure, so there may be a concealed space. Just be careful. There might be a scuttle hole, Bubba. Right now, we're checking to make sure that there is uh, no possible place anybody could hide, especially if they have a gun. Lock it from the inside, step, step across. Step across. Yeah, lock, 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 lock the dead. No, the cage. Lock, okay. You're, you're you tight then? Lock the cage. Yeah. Let go of it. Let go of it. Steve, you let him punch one just to make sure. Okay, go punch. Go ahead, Dan. You're good. It's all good. Same. We're, we're good. good. Come through to the bedroom. All right. That's what happened. Lost me. Hold on. Oh, you got one back there still? Side. One walking. Playing the game. They don't want we are secure. Narcotics shouldn't come up. This operation went very well, especially considering the short time that we had to prepare for it. We had a few issues on the side. One of our problems was this, the strap that we had wasn't long enough to make it to the back door. So we aborted that. I ran out of strap. Looked like a cartoon getting yanked backwards. We were able to get our front door open quickly because we had the shorter strap and obviously the shorter distance to go. So it was no problem for us. It didn't go as we planned, but that's what contingencies are for. If we can break a door and a window and have them give up on us, mission success. Just gonna spend the day with the kids. Just grab a bite to eat. Just never have enough time to spend with the kids and the wife. Mama, me and you, we could do. 
where I grew up, it was, um, I guess we considered a low income neighborhood. It was uh, high crime. He did the bread? Yeah. Oh, this is the best bread I ever had. My job, we see a lot of the bad stuff that's happening around Dallas, and so it's real refreshing to come home to a to a pretty face every day. Yeah, Daddy's got to go to work. You say it, Mama? Oh, come here. Come here. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. Bye. Call me. All right. Bye. Look like we have a barricaded person with a suspect allegedly broke into his girl ex-girlfriend's home, uh, assaulted her. I'm not sure if you have any weapons or not. Like there goes my Memorial Day. I need you to get on the Alpha David corner. That's the last patrol officer we need to release. This is a dangerous situation. I think the best thing I can do for my family is just basically handle my job here and get home safe. Daddy's got to go to work. We have a barricaded person broke into his ex-girlfriend's home. I'm not sure if you have any weapons or not. It's a dangerous situation. The best thing I can do for my family is handle my job here and get home safe. What we have is a suspect here that apparently came to his ex-girlfriend's house. They have a child together. He's not supposed to be there. Patrol got here, I guess, pretty quick, and we're going to double-check a few things. And the negotiators right now are trying to get intel on the residents, trying to maybe figure out the guy's armed, maybe get a floor plan of the house, try to get information from the complainant on this offense. Were y'all living together? No. We haven't lived with him since before she was here. OK. Were you at the house? He came and knocked on the door. I wouldn't let him in because he's not supposed to be there. Okay, so what ended up happening was uh, he went to the front door, rear door. She wouldn't let him in either way. And he actually ended up crawling in and through a dog door and made it inside the house. <laughs> the fight started. Uh, she tried to call 911. Pulled the phone out of my hand, yanked it out of the wall, yanked the other phone out of the wall. At that point, I grabbed her up, left the house, and went up to the neighbor's house and oh, called the police. Okay. Does he have any guns in there? Anything that could hurt us? This is a gas, uh, gas gun. You'll be our gas person back in the back. Okay. Basically, my role is to uh, secure the perimeter from the seaside, which is the back side. I also have uh, the gas pack in case I have to induce tear gas in the residence. Got everybody in position. And we're just gonna let the command post know the perimeter is set and then we're gonna attempt to contact the suspect inside. We understand there's one more phone that is still working that he didn't rip out. with the police department, you there? Okay, I don't know if you heard me or not, but the, the phone disconnected. Okay, the phone just disconnected. I hadn't seen anything from the suspect or heard anything or hadn't seen any movement. 
trying to loud hail them from the APC, seeing if we get a response out of them. This is Dallas Police Department SWAT. We have a house the police around it. We just want you to come outside and surrender and talk to us. We've been out here for a long time. You need to come outside. Play and snow. You're all right. We're not going to go anywhere until you come outside and talk to us. talks to you about his daughter. How does he view her, his daughter? OK, so it seems like he's a pretty good dad when he is around. One of the important things about getting information from family members and friends is to get anything that we can use to try and work with. OK, sir. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. We know you care about your daughter. Yeah. Come outside so you can see her. If we have to come inside, you will not have the opportunity to see your daughter. Let's go ahead and end this so everyone can go on with their lives. We've been loud hailing a pretty good while. Um, no response from the suspect. I think the entry team is trying to get together and figure out what the next plan of action is going to be. We're not going anywhere. Can you come outside and talk to us? It complicates things a little bit when the suspect doesn't engage us. We have to escalate a little bit more just to get a rise out of the suspect. Right now, we're getting a throw phone set up. Misty, would be less lethal. 6-3, cover. We have an option of throwing a phone inside the location and uh, ringing it and, through loud hailing, ask him to answer it. They're giving me a little bit more time to talk to you. But time is running out. They can approach with the shield from the APC. They can port and cover that window, mm -hmm. drop the, the throw phone. You can pick up Larry and Freak to supplement your entry team back here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're moving up using the APC as cover. A uh, team's going to go up and deploy the throw phone in a, a window on the Baker side of the house. Pick it up. You can talk directly to us. We can hear your side of the story. So we can end this. Right now it's a sit and wait. We just gotta kinda wait and see if he picks up the phone. Pick up the phone. Time is running out. are going to change, and they're going to change fast. We've been here about four hours. Hadn't been able to contact the suspect via phone or just by the loud hail. So we, at this point, usually try to escalate, maybe in, induce tear gas into the location. But we're going to try to stay away from that today because we have a mother and a daughter that's got to stay there tonight. Y'all ready? What we're going to do is we're going to stay on the passenger side of the APC. He's going to back up and drive us over there to the right corner. I think the entry team is going to slow search the location now, taking one room at a time. It's going to make it more dangerous because the suspect, basically, is going to hear us coming. Uh, he's not going to have to contend with the chemical agents inside the residence. You still have the opportunity to come outside the house on your own. We 
have a barricaded person, broke into his ex-girlfriend's home, assaulted her. Come outside and surrender. There's been no response from the suspect, no movement at all. The entry team is gonna slow search the location now. The suspect is gonna hear us coming. It's kind of dangerous. Y'all ready? Hang tight, hang tight, hold it. Okay, so I have an attic. How do I get into the attic? The garage. Garage? Now they have to search the attic. Suspect may be hiding there. You ready? Basically, it's real dangerous because the first thing the suspect sees is your head. Mystery has been solved. He's not here. Ugh. I guess he can fit through the dog door. One way to spend your Sunday. Oh, we didn't find anything. Okay, so it's pretty much secure. <laughs> search the attic, search the crawl spaces, did primary and secondary search of the residence. Uh, the suspect apparently got out before patrol set up the perimeter, so it happens. Some weekend. <laughs> Happy Memorial Day. It's not disappointing. It's, it's part of the job to be here for four hours and not get a suspect. It's not disappointing or anything because if you let that disappoint you, you're in for a long career. Complaining got out. She's okay, so we're good. He'll be arrested sooner or later. The system is gonna win. It just didn't win today. Sugar. Let's get over a little bit. Let Jeffrey sit down. That's your uncle Clifford. He was a uh, he was at a football game or something, doing something. That's your uncle. That's Daddy's brother. There he is, right there. Oh, it's your uncle Clifford. Lean back a little bit. Let me turn the page. Uh, that that oh. may be a playoff game right there. I think first time Clifford went to jail. I think he just said graduated high school. That's basically where it started all going wrong from there. I see him right there too. That's when he played basketball. What's that? That's Uncle Clifford. Uh. <laughs> he started committing other robberies. He started selling drugs. Clifford was basically a one-man crime wave. <laughs> he was number 12. I used to run number 12 yeah. when I was little too. One day I came home from college and they were looking for him and I told him he was at home. And I took him right to the front door because he needed, he needed to go to jail. It wasn't a hard decision for me to make. Sometimes you gotta save people from themselves. Larry, where, where were that uh, Cliff was playing and they needed to win that game so bad and he got hurt? Is that me? You remember he got hurt? That, that might had, have been me. Was that you? Yeah. I was thinking it was Clifford. No, it was me. And he said, and when you cry like a baby? <laughs> no, it must have been Clifford. No. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been Clifford yeah, on that day. Really? I think it's very important for my kids to meet Clifford because they weren't even born when he went to jail. I'm not sure how my kids are going to react. They've never been in a jail or a prison or anything, so I'm just a little anxious to see how they're going to react to it.
here recently in Dallas, we've had a spike of uh, heroin usage, distribution, and things of the sort. So it's our responsibility to get these guys arrested and get them off the streets. Right now, I'm en route to the helicopter unit in order to get some video surveillance of a house that we're going to do a warrant on. Let's go. We're out of here. Vamos. We're flying over the suspect's house so that we can get views of the left side of the house that we can't get from the ground. It's going to be the northwest corner of the intersection. The front entry garage there with two big brown spots in the driveway. Pit full with that car in the backyard. He's got a lot of trees covering, and uh, we can't tell how many windows over there on that left side of the house. OK, we're ready? Pit full. All right. We'll have to improvise and just make the best of it when we get on scene. This case originated from a heroin overdose. We busted the overdose victim's dealer, and we went to his dealer, and now we're at this guy. We have four felony warrants for the uh, your main suspect. We're going to pull up an APC-1 on the front side, have a strap team go to the Alpha-1 window and to the Alpha-2 door, and we'll do a double pull on the window and the front door. No, just find, find the just the gate. Yeah, that's gonna be hard too. Yeah, you can't. You gotta to it. And then they gotta drop it, cover, it come in on. Somebody's gonna have to cover first. Cover deep. My main job today would be to breach the fence. I need somebody off of this. I need you know what there. And to find a window that will give the team the most protection as they make entry. <laughs> Shots. Andre was obviously a little nervous. To me, it looks like there's a window right here. As of right now, we don't know the exact number of windows on the Baker side of the house. And because right now we don't know, what we'll do is we'll go up there, we'll fill it out, we'll see what we need, and then we'll make it, you know, we'll make it work for us. This window has priority. Yeah. If you feel like you can protect these guys better here, then do that one. Okay. If you feel like, hey, that's not a concern, and then push past us and go to one of these. You make the decision on whether it's best to go to this window mm -hmm. or to push to this one. Okay. It's up to you. You're going to have to read it once you breach through this here, saying, what do we need to do now? Time to go to work. Oh. We're ready. Always ready. That's what we're designed to do. Let's go! Designed to be. It's up to you. Right now, I'm trying to think of the timing in my head and how this thing will go down, try to get a picture of everything that's going to happen. You see your job. You see everybody else's job so that things don't surprise you. This case originated from a heroin overdose. We went to his dealer, and now we're at this guy. We're going to strap the front door the front window. We'll do a double pull on the window and the front door. Oh, let's go! You see your job. You see everybody else's job. You know what the operation is so that things don't surprise you. There it is, guys. Oh, you're good, right here. Go, go. Coming up in the lot. Let him know we're in the lot. Aim 
right for the hinges on that fence. Hard hit! Door's on the left. See? Charlie wants a door. Not been cleared. Didn't see it. Yeah, was this the only window? I think he was in this room. Yeah, he ran to the door because when the yeah. front cage came off and the door, Go ahead, he was standing right there. Yeah. They're still doing the search. I don't know if they got anything. I know we got our suspects, so that was good. It went good. It went good. There was no wind, no second window on this side. And we didn't have to breach the gate. We just opened it, so it went smooth. Yep. Good idea to check that and see if it's locked. That was you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you go up there and it's banging on the door, and all you got to do is turn, turn it and it open it. Yeah. No, did, were you passing the window with Clubber was breaking it out? Glass flying everywhere. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> I looked up. I go, oh. <laughs> all right. This was found in the front closet. He pointed it out to us. Got lots of money. The reason they wrap it up so much is because this stuff stinks so bad. That's about an ounce of black tar heroin so far. I think that's what the person overdosed on the, so as to why we came out here on the warrant. So, good deal. That's what we're here for. And I ain't smelling it. <laughs> So we're at Crab's Prairie. I'm going to visit my Uncle Cleaver today. Well, right now we're going down to uh, Huntsville, uh, East Ham Prison. I'm going to take my kids to visit my brother. He sent them several cars and letters. And basically they're getting cars and letters from uh, a person they don't know. I think he's going to be excited to see us for the first time. I'm going to tell them about gymnastics, school, and uh, sugar. my dog, Sugar. Where are we going? I spoke to Clifford about bringing the kids down there, and he, he was real anxious to see them. Every time I came down there without them, he wanted me to bring them, but I just waited. I was waiting for the right time. Now they're old enough to understand and maybe can digest what they're about to see. search warrant house of an alleged crack dealer. We're gonna go out and do a drive-by and see just what we're up against. We just want our deployment vehicles, something that's uh, nondescript, that looks like it belongs in the neighborhood that we're driving in. Of course, we try to do it a little bit, uh, little bit covert. up on it whenever we start getting close to the house. Johnny, use this big two-story as your reference right now. 
start filming on that. That'll give us that'll yeah, give us a cue. Got the big two story, and then the red brick. Yeah, that's it right there. That little bitty cracker box little white house. Yeah, van out front. That's the smallest house I've ever seen. It is tight. Well, we got that fence down that side. I might not be able to get much. There's come up Elmore. Yeah. yeah. Well, man, I don't know. Time. Too busy. Well, I don't know if I got anything, Charlie. The fence blocked our view of the back of the house, and we really do need to know how many doors and windows are back there. But if we keep driving around this neighborhood, it could alert the suspected dealers that live there that they're being watched. Ice cream, man? Yeah. I say we do it again. Let's see if you can stop a little bit before, as long as we can't be seen. Yeah. And we'll see if we can't look up over into the backyard. Yeah. Nice and easy to work. Three windows down the Delta side, all with bars, 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 bars caged front. front. Four to five window. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Small girl in front. Yep. Is that a female? Yeah. Okay, the suspect that they made the buys off of was a black female. Corner house. Suspect's a black female, sells through a uh, burglar bars on the front door. The plan is the van and APC2 will stop short of that fence. We're going to come from the alpha side. Our focus is going to be to try to get into the house quickly. So we're going to pull the front door and we're going to make an alternate entry point out of a front window. My job is going to be to provide cover on the pull team on the front door. There's the female that was coming out of the front. That's the uh, child. Just walked out, let the bar slam behind her. The presence of the child kind of worries us. Supposedly a, a little juvenile running around there, so we're going to try to be real careful about the pool. The door's open, we're just going to go straight on in. Did you say PC2? intelligence on the location. Corner house, our suspect's a black female. Sells through burglar bars on the front door. It's a very small house. That's the smallest house I've ever seen. There'll be another team that'll be providing the cover in the back of the house. The fence blocked our view on the drive-by, so we're not sure exactly what's back there. In front of us, guys. Heads up. There's a car pulling up front. People out front. We're going to have to take down that car in the driveway, too. <laughs> No! 
Oh, man! Get it, Frank, get it! Oh! Get up from behind, man! As we approach the door and put our tool in the cage, a male on the inside opened the interior door. He started to reach for our, our tool, and somebody politely told him not to touch that. And he went back inside, and we went ahead and pulled it. That's this way, nail down. Down. All the way down. It's a trust game. I got you. I got you. All the way down. Where's my daughter? There was a female and a male in there both in their mid-30s. But that Cadillac pulled up, and it had one, two, three, four, five, six people in it. So got real busy out front real fast. Find it open? Yeah, we found some cracks and marijuana. You could tell where they were selling in the back. That back door, back they had that little slot. That's the smallest house I think we've ever hit. I know. It's, it's tiny. <laughs> Can you about, what, 200 square feet? Maybe. Something like that. It, it kind of breaks your heart when you got kids growing up in an environment like this. You got a house in there that doesn't have running water. It truly is a shame. It went real well. Uh, the kids were happy to see him. He was happy to see the kids. I thought my daughter looked like my wife, and just I mean, just it went how I thought it would go. Really, I thought he'd be pretty happy about it. I've been here a long time, and uh, over the years, you know, I have time to think, ponder mistakes, bad decisions. I can verify that if you do make the wrong decision, then you will pay. He in jail because he did bad things. Uh, as far as my little niece, she's a beautiful girl. She was so cute, she told me, I, I love you, uncle. First time she ever seen me, it broke my heart, right? But, you know, Jeffries, he's on. Uh, Real energetic type kid. I can see myself at that age when I was energetic. He told me he missed me um, and he and be good. I think the lessons that I know Jeffrey can take away is about doing what's right if the consequences of your actions when you don't do what's right. We sat there for a while before he came out and the kids were just trying to take in the whole scene where all the other inmates talking and the bars closing and locking, the, the guys walking by chained up. I think it, it maybe, you know, it was an eye opener for him. Our family have always been close, no matter what's done. Once it's done, then the family always come together. I was happy to see him, and I'm ready to go back. He's taking me to the park when he comes home.